about every three months, I get the itch to do something dramatic with my computer, maybe load up some crazy Linux distribution, or just reinstall, or try out Windows 7 beta, or see if I can make my machine a Hackintosh. I mean, it's it's anything. It, it's broad spectrum, about every three months. I, I, and it always happens, pretty much, not even necessarily three months, it just seems to always happen as soon as I get everything perfectly dialed in, like just the right app set up with just the right settings, everything bookmarked just the right way, you know, all that kind of stuff, the right network connections. And then it's like, do I really want to reload my machine and reset all that stuff up? Uh, sometimes, sometimes that's fun, but sometimes I don't want to bother with it. So I've decided I'm going to look into some more hard drive imaging solutions. I've used part image a lot in the past, but I think my relationship with part image is probably coming to an end. So I put the message out there to the Twitterverse asking people what they recommended for an open source drive cloning system, and we're going to be looking into that. But on top of that, I'm going to compare open source drive cloning systems with commercial cloning systems over the next several episodes of an in-depth look. But in this episode of an in-depth look, it's Clonezilla and how it can help you back up your computer or in my case, maybe back up your client's machine so that way you don't have to constantly reload Windows XP every time they screw it up with some spyware. Sorry. But yeah, Clonezilla in this episode of An In-Depth Look. <laughs> Like I mentioned, I have used cloning software before, so I have some basic requirements from any disk imaging software that I'm going to need. One is I need to be able to uh, do a different couple of scenarios. For me, it's important if I need to reload a system and I don't already have an existing image, I need to be able to go to another machine, boot that machine, image its drive to a USB disk, then go over to the machine I need to reinstall on and reapply that image to the broken machine. This is a trick you can use to avoid the lengthy process of uh, reinstallation, and it's especially useful if it's similar hardware between uh, a good source machine and the machine that broke that you have to re-image. So I need to be able to boot off a USB device. Well, Clonezilla obviously can do that. Clonezilla is just an application that runs on top of Linux. So as long as you can boot Linux on the machine, you can use Clonezilla. Now, to make things a little more of a complete package, they have uh, something called Clonezilla Live. Clonezilla Live is essentially a live distribution. It's a live CD. You boot off the CD, or you could write it to a USB memory stick, or in my case, what I do is I write it to a Mac store. No, no, no. It's a, uh, it's a Western Digital, and I'm not a huge Western Digital guy, but I have a Western Digital Passport hard drive. You've seen those. They're uh, the little portable hard drives that uh, you can... Um, you know what? I have one. I should grab one for those of you watching the video so you can see it. Hold on just a second. All right, so a lot of you have probably seen these. It's these Western Digital Passport drives, and they're uh, they're just one cord, and it's powered by USB, and you, um, you just simply take it up to the machine you want, you plug it in, and then it shows up as USB drive, and if most modern machines now can boot off the USB disk, uh, then you can load Linux on this like I have. I have uh, a very minimal Linux distribution on here. And then I, ru I can run Clonezilla directly off this disk, and actually I can write the image of the machine I'm taking it from back to this disk. So then I just simply unplug this little passport drive here. I unplug this guy. I go plug it into uh, the machine I want to restore the image to. I boot off this. I restore the image, and I'm done. It actually works really great. So I really, if you're going to get into this, if you have to do a lot of machines, if you're doing support and stuff, I definitely recommend one of these little passport drive units. These things are very, very handy for that. And the one, and the reason why I like them is because the one USB cord is powered over a USB bus, so no power cord to lug around which means you get there, you don't have to try to find a power plug to go into, and you don't have to, you know, you might accidentally forget the power. It's just, it's so much easier just if it's one cord and it's powered off the bus, so it's it's a slam dunk. Anyways, so what, what you can do is uh, you can get these, uh, you can get Clonezilla Live, and you can also get things like the System Rescue CD. I recommend if you haven't ever checked out the System Rescue CD, you should definitely look that up. It's a really handy sort of a Swiss Army knife of different tools, memory testers and things like that. And you can load that onto the USB hard drive, install it to the USB hard drive, or burn it to a CD, whatever you want to do. You, you boot up off of that, and then you image the machine, and you can write it to a disk. Or some people, what sometimes what they will do is they will take out uh, the hard drive from the machine they want to image, put it in the machine they are imaging, 
and they will do a drive duplication. Now, Clonezilla also supports that, so it gives you a lot of functionality. And that's one of the main things that I, I required from Clonezilla is that it be able to do what the commercial software can also do. So, the, one of the questions that I had gotten when I did the Twitter thing was, can Clonezilla back up to DVDs? Now, I don't think Clonezilla has that functionality built into it directly. So if you want to back up to DVDs and you're running a Linux server or a Linux desktop, you need to more you need more something like Mondo Rescue. You need to look into that. Mondo Rescue will let you build a set of restoration CDs, and this has also been something I've done in the past where I'll just stick a set of restoration CDs right inside the case as long as it's not like on any of the components, and then when I get called out there, I'll pop open the case, grab the CDs and do a restoration. That's pretty handy too. Um but it's not as flexible because that that can get out of date pretty quickly. Now let me tell you my dream setup. <clears throat> this is what I really want to accomplish with Clonezilla, and I think I can do it because I've been doing some research here, and this is kind of what my uh, plan is. All right, take my laptop with me everywhere I go, right? And pretty much everywhere I go, I can plug into the network. So what I want to do is Clonezilla has something like uh, what Ghost has. Ghost has their shout. Cast? No, that's not right. The Ghostcast server. That basically, it's a it's a um, it's a server service that you run on a machine, and then the Clonezilla client software, or in, when you're using Ghost, the Ghost software can connect to it. It'll do a network broadcast. It'll find its imaging server, and then it can do uh, directly image from the machine to a network server, and then you can blast that image out to multiple computers. Now, that's super handy. Think about this for a second. If you're lucky enough where you have um, several computers that are a similar hardware configuration and they have network cards that can boot off the network, you can get crazy. <laughs> this is pretty neat. You can have those machines, you can have the Clonezilla server boot those machines over the network. If they boot up, they do a PXE boot off the network, they'll essentially load the Clonezilla server, gives them a little small diskless uh, Linux kernel that they boot up off of over the network, they connect to the server, and then you can push an image to them. This is a really nice way to roll out a new version of an operating system or do a mass restore if you're in a school and you want to reload an entire lab after a semester. This is how you accomplish that quickly. What I want to do is something a little smaller scale than that. I just want to be able to show up on site with several different client images on my hard drive and then serve an image to a particular workstation. Oh, hi there, Sally. You blew up your XP installation again because you tried to play a poker game over the Internet, right? Well, hold on. Let me Give me 20 minutes and I'll have your machine back to this right state. Go there, plug my laptop in, fire up the Clonezilla server, go over to the machine, boot off my USB hard drive, fire up the Clonezilla client, Blast the image from the server to the client. Twenty minutes later, and I and I, so far it looks like it's going to be for uh, for like a fifteen gigabyte workstation uh, re-imaging. It looks like it's going to be about twenty to thirty five minutes, depending on the speed of the network. Um, twenty to thirty five minutes later, she reboots. Her machine's exactly the way it was when I took that image. And then I might have to just tweak a few things to get things back to the way they are. But if you use things like Fox Marks to, to synchronize her bookmarks to the Fox Marks service, and uh, she has some sort of online mail system, maybe it's IMAP, maybe it's Gmail, I mean, I don't know, then all of those kinds of those dynamic types of information will reload back into the static programs that you have set up. And it seems to be working pretty well for me in the really early stages that I've tried it. So I'm not an expert on it, but I actually think it's going to be um, a really great solution. The only problem is is the potential storage issue on my laptop. But it does mean I'll have the flexibility of show up on site, blast an image to a machine, and I'm done. And if the client's big enough, I could have my own local Clonezilla server on site all the time. So there's lots of different potential here. Now, commercial products also offer this, but this is something you're really seeing in a uh, free gpl software, and it's pretty exciting. Part image got close to this, but in my opinion, it fell short, especially in terms of usability. But let's talk about Clonezilla's usability for a second, because Clonezilla, in my opinion, isn't necessarily winning a lot of awards in this area either. It's a little bit, I don't know, maybe I would say it's a little bit intimidating to look at if you're not extremely comfortable with Linux. You look at it and it, it, it looks... I mean, it's end curses, which means it's text-based, and it, it has options, and it has Linux things that sometimes fly by the screen, and for some people, I know that can be intimidating. So let's take a look for a minute at the interface and uh, kind of explain maybe some grief. No, I don't, I don't want to say grievances, but maybe say maybe I could say some areas where the commercial products, I think, probably will have a one-up one, uh, leg up on this, but 
it's still very functional. Now, maybe I make Clonezilla sound a little worse than it is in the UI department. It's all very next step, next step, next step oriented. Select, select. Uh, it's it's just text based, and that does freak some people out for some reason. But I think when you're booting off something, you're in a really minimal environment. I don't think it's that bad. And if 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 you're a Linux guy, if you're a if you're a guy or a gal that spends a lot of time in Linux or the command line or BSD, heck, if you're just even in DOS, I mean, if you spend some time on the command line, this probably isn't going to bother you at all. If you're a Windows admin and you're just looking for maybe some drive imaging on the cheap, just spend some time with it. It's not too bad. There's screenshots and there's documentations and there's, thing out there, there's things out there that will help you work through it. The interface is uh, a little on the non-shiny side, but I don't really find that to be an issue with this type of product. If this was, I don't know, some sort of desktop product that was meant to be used by average users, I'd say, hey, okay. I'm with you on there, but I think for what we're doing as technical people, if you're if you're off put by just a little bit, if you look at the screenshots and you say, "Oh, this is too technical for me," don't worry about that. It's not. It's very simple to use, and uh, it'll step you through each process. But you really have to give the power crown to Clonezilla. So far, I'm really impressed. It's rocking uh, Windows support with full NTFS support. It rocks FAT support. It HFS for the Mac, HFS Plus, so it can you can it has to be an Intel Mac. But you can use Clonezilla to image a, uh, a Macintosh, which is great. If you're rocking the multi-environment like I am and my clients are, it's really handy. It also can do uh, LVM-enabled Linux machines, the Linux volume management. It doesn't do LVM1, but if you're using LVM2, which a lot of OpenSUSE machines did LVM by default for a while, you're set too. It can actually manage that. And that's also really nice. It's great to see something that comes out and supports Windows and Mac, but also support some of the more advanced features of Linux. That's not something you're going to find, I don't think. I haven't looked yet. We're not in that episode yet, but I don't think we're going to find that in any particular commercial offering. I might be wrong. It's been a little while since I've looked, but my, my gut tells me that that kind of level of support for all three platforms like that is going to be unique. It can also do... Um, I think what they call a block level backup. So then it just doesn't care. It doesn't care what the file system is. It's just getting the blocks of the drive. And then that branches it out even further because now you're not even talking about um, file system support. You're just talking about if it can read and write a block device. And uh, that's going to be pretty much all types of storage. So Clonezilla's got some serious power. It's coming at you with lots of different types of um, file systems and operating system support. I think it's got to have... Um, one of the best range and varieties as far as features go from uh, just a you know a drive duplication or backup to a USB disk or backup to a network share, backup a Windows, Mac, Linux. I mean, you're really talking a, a wide selection, so Clonezilla's got to be rocking it. Now, I'm not a Clonezilla expert. I've just started using it, and I'm kind of just getting into this, but I would love to hear from you what you're using. Do you have a, uh, clone, a drive cloning software that you think is the, the bee's knees? Uh, maybe it's not Clonezilla. Maybe it is. I'd love to hear about it. So write me, chris at jupiterbroadcasting.com, or even better, hit me up on Twitter, twitter.com slash chrislas. Let me know what you think. I'll give it some time before I do the next in-depth look at drive cloning, so that way I can get some of your feedback and mull it over and see what everybody thinks. Because obviously there's lots of people out there that watch these videos, and you all will have different experience with this kinds of stuff. So I'd love to get that input. Um, it just makes a better show. One more thing to talk about would be we've got a new promo code for GoDaddy.com. If you use the code Linux20, you can save 20% off one, two, and three years of hosting at GoDaddy.com. That's pretty great. And I can confidently say that GoDaddy hosting has been excellent for us. We mirror the audio versions of these shows that we put out at JupiterBroadcasting.com. We, uh, we mirror them across an array of GoDaddy hosted servers and we have never had any issues. It has been fantastic. They're Linux machines. They've also got Windows machines. I don't know why you do that, but they have those, and uh, it's been it's been great. We get uh, a great control panel. They have some great um, usage statistics, so you can pull down some stats of your of your uh, of your web server. They they collect all that for you, and it's they've got a great interface to look at all of that. I'm really impressed. So use the code Linux20 when you check out, and you can get 20% off shared hosting. Uh, I don't think it does. I don't think that does dedicated hosting. If you want uh, a discount on dedicated hosting or anything else at GoDaddy, you can just use the code Linux, and that gets you 10% off anything. So that's definitely something we appreciate because it helps us out by showing our value to GoDaddy. 
All right, everyone, I think that just wraps up this episode of an in-depth look. I'd love to hear your feedback on this particular one because I really want to just settle on a cloning system and be like the king of that cloning system and really rock the setup. So I want to be sure I'm going the right route. I think Clonezilla is it. If you haven't checked out that System Rescue CD I mentioned, you got to go check out the System Rescue CD because that is definitely something you should have a burnt copy of laying around your house. And if your machine ever starts acting up, you just pop that sucker in and you run some diagnostics. It's totally worth it. It's free. Why wouldn't you do that? Plus, it's like uh, it's tiny. It's it's like under 100 megabytes. It, it's it's great. Or put it on. The, you don't even have to burn it to see. It. Put it on a USB thumbstick. Everybody's got a few of those things lying around. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching or listening to this episode of an in-depth look. Keep it geeky. This episode of An In-Depth Look is sponsored by GoDaddy.com, the world's largest host and domain name registrar. If you're ready to make an impact online, GoDaddy.com has got you covered. Domain names as low as $1.99, plus world-class hosting with unlimited disk space and bandwidth. Do-it-yourself website builders, dedicated servers, and SSL certificates, and so much more. Plus, as an in-depth viewer, enter promo code LINUX20 at checkout and save an additional 20% off any one, two, or even three years website hosting plan. Some restrictions apply. See site for details. Get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com.